on the program today. International Monetary Fund raises world economic outlook for the first time in a year. Global oil and gas exploration spend hits record highs. In Ghana and Trademark Africa signed pact to enhance trade infrastructure in the country. Hello and welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Willie Bung. As always, let's check in on the market, starting with Africa, where stocks were mostly trading with positive, negative sentiments at intraday. The NGX was the lone gainer, up by 0.18%, while South Africa was down 0.99% at intraday. Elsewhere, Egypt's EGX30 fell by 0.93%, that's almost 1% at intraday, while the Nairobi Securities Exchange also closed Monday's trading activity in negative territory. Now, let's check out other activities, I mean activities, intraday activities at the NGX with Samson Owolabi, Investment Research Analyst, ARM Securities Limited. Good afternoon, Samson. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, Samson, now what's driving? We've seen a, a huge uptick in the in the equities market. The ASI is up 0.18% at intraday uh, at the time I checked. We well, want to know what's driving, what factors or what stocks are driving this bullish momentum at the moment. Okay, so thank you very much. Now, um, the major factors that have been driving the market recently, we have been seeing like improved liquidity in the market recently. And based on the fact that there's been some maturity that has hit the market, we can say like there's been an excess of 1.3 trillion now in terms of liquidity in the market. So we believe these are this is one of the factors that have been driving the market. And also when you see we are in the um the period in which um any um um, financial energy results are going to be released right now. So we are seeing um, these two as a, one of the major factors that have been driving the market. So these have been one of the things that have been driving the market. Okay. So uh, well, we've seen some earnings coming in. Um, the, um, flour mills are just posted, not so good reports. Uh, Okomo oil also coming in yesterday, not so great. What would you say are the factors really, apart from, you know, we know there's high inflation out there, Naira devaluation, and other macroeconomic headwinds, but what would you say is the major cause of the high cost of sales for most companies when there, uh, some are reporting higher earnings? Okay, so thank you very much. Now, when you look at that, you will realize that most of these companies, you look, we can see that they are seeing um, earnings go up um, significantly. And one of the factors that we are now seeing the bottom line where we see the profit after tax decline is that it's still like the major factors that you um, noted, and um, it's uh, all boils around the um, the naira depreciation and um, the inflation, especially the naira depreciation. You see that most um, FMCG companies right now they have um, this kind of um, let's say this kind of a disadvantage when it comes to like um, the FX um, let's say the FX um, scarcity problems that they have been having. So all these things have been driving their OPEX up, and we see that a lot of things um, when you look at even staff salaries and all those things too, they have been part of the major factor those have been driving cost up, which is, has been the major reason why we have been seeing um, decrease in the profits after tax, even though we have been seeing high earnings. And also when you look at it, finance cost also has also been a major issue when you look at how yields trended upward, leading to um, increase in um, um, making borrowing costs to be more expensive and higher. So these are the factors that have really, really been affecting um, the earnings of most companies. Yeah, we'll let's just look at how the NGX is trading overall. We know it's having positive uh, performance. Uh, it's being supported by most big names in the market like Airtel, Girigou. Well, we're looking at the downtime we're experiencing with most mobile applications for making mo uh, money transfers. Uh, recently, since last week, we've been having complaints. We want to know how this is affecting trading on the floor of the exchange. Has there been any lag in terms of um, investors trying to buy stocks and not able to execute at the time they want to? Has there been any uh, backlog in terms of sh uh, share buying? 
Yeah, well, you know, that is a, definitely what we're going to be one factor that's going to like affect and um, um, cost back also because when people want to make transactions and when they want to like trade down, down, let's see, um, they're trying to like initiate transaction from their apps and also trying to like um, make um, settlements for trades. You'll see that if they have issues in that particular site, it is really still going to affect the market because the funds are supposed to come at the particular time. They're not coming in based on the network reach and the rise. So these things are going to like well, we, we kind of like want to link this to what's going, currently going on, you know, the CBN's drive for a cashless economy. And um, right now, the infrastructure, that's the mobile platforms and other uh, transfer platforms are not functioning as they should. What do you think uh, should be done? What alternatives should be in place to ensure that trade goes on smoothly and that investors are not um, tied down when they need to move very quickly? Okay, so um, quickly on based on that, I think what we still need to do is that I think um, all these um, financial institutions we need to like um, find a way up to just make sure that um, all this transaction can go on um, faster. And, and what I mean by that is that you can look at your, um, let's say their um, IT um, department and look at all their infrastructure outside and find a way. There's always a way of making things to work faster. All we just have to look is just like to look at the um, fundamentals, look at okay, what's is really causing this issue how can we like move from this particular point to the point where we want to get to so those are the major factors that we need to look at look at what are the major causes of this thing and once they have found the major causes and one of the major um cause is still based on the fact that you know i think that most um, stars and most people are in charge of all these um, um um, activities, they are being stressed right now based on the fact that there have been influx of people going into the bank, trying to like make transactions, trying to get cash out. So these, um, let's say the um, increased activity and um, is affecting people in that particular line. So this is one of the things that they just need to like look out for and find a way to just um, maximize the um, resources at their, um, at their hand. Okay, so if we look at um, stocks right now and trading and the market, what would you say would drive, how would you say the market is going to close today? What are the factors we have to look out for and would the bullish momentum be sustained? Okay, well, so um, as we've stated in our um, outlook for 2023, we have seen that one of the major factors that's going to drive the market is going to be, um, let's say, um, liquidity um, in the market. We are kind of, and also um, we mark that there's going to be more liquidity in the market, especially in H1 2023, and also the direction of yield on the fixed income market. And we have been seeing yield go down on the fixed income market right now. So this is going to like also um, affect the trajectory of activities in the equities market, which is part of the reasons why we are seeing like improved activity in the equities market. And so those are the major points that we noted. And um, also when we look at um, really the um, financial results by as much as they are coming in and um, let's say companies that um, seem to like pay dividend and they have a track record of paying that um, good dividend over time, they'll be the major ones that are going to drive activities in the market. So these are the major factors that I've seen that um, is driving the market um, today. And um, when we look at it, um, maybe the market is going to close on a positive or on a negative level. Well, it is still like the last time I checked it's still like on the positive side. However, we can never can tell what will happen later on in the market. So that is just my view right now. We just wait and see what will happen. As of the last time that I checked, the market is um, on a positive um so we just have to wait and see. But before I let you go, uh, Samson, I just wanted, you know, we've just seen the downgrade, further downgrade of uh, Nigeria's credit rating to junk status. Have you seen, and you're just, you're a trader, have you seen any move from, by traders, investors from the bond space into the equities market? Have there been any uh, hurry back to equities mm -hmm. from bonds? Okay, well, the concerning the recent downgrade, what I know is that it's going to, like, affect um, the let's say the European space more than um, the local Nigerian debt markets. It's going to affect the um, dollar debt market space more than the Nigerian um, debt market. So um, that is one thing. The major factors that are going to affect the normal um, local market, we have stated it earlier, which is um, the trend of yield and the like. So, but in terms of that, the factors that are going to affect the equity market have stated it earlier. So I don't really see this really, really affecting um, the equities market.
Thank you so much, uh, Samson Owulabi, uh, Investment Research Analyst, ARM Securities, for sharing your insights on the program at Angel Day Activities on the NGX. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice. Now over to the Middle East, where sentiments were mostly negative. Also at intraday, Abu Dhabi index was trading down 0.46%, while the Dubai index was up uh, marginally by 0.01%. Now still within the region, we saw Saudi Arabia down 0.32%. Qatari index also down 1.72%. Uh, now we flip over to other markets. Now in Asia, we see Asia Pacific shares trading mostly um, down on Tuesday as investors digested a range of economic data and a potential interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 1.03%. Mainland China's Shanghai Composite dipped 0.42%. And the Shenzhen component was down 0.8% as China's official manufacturing PMI reported a reading of 50.1 points. Australia's S&P ESX 200 closed slightly below the flat line at 7,476 points. Japan's Nikkei 225 ended 0.39% down at 27,327 points as Japan reported an unemployment rate of 2.5% for December in line with expectations. South Korea's benchmark cost speed declined 1% after the country lugged a 7.3% drop for December's year-on-year -year industrial output higher than analyst expectations of a 5.1% fall. Now we'll move over to U.S. where stock futures declined slightly on Tuesday as the S&P 500 looks to cap off its best gen January since 2019. Futures tied to the S&P 500 dipped 1.3% while futures connected to the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.77%. Nasdaq 100 futures dropped nearly 2%. Now the overnight moves followed a pause in what's been a stellar January for stocks during regular trading. The Dow declined 260 points, while the S&P and Nasdaq Composite fell 1.3 and 1.96% each. Stocks have rallied to start the year after a brutal 2022 and the worst year for stocks since 2008. Now, after the break, update from the commodity space. That's right, after the break, this is Business Incorporated. Welcome back. Now we're going to be talking eggs. Uh, eggs are largely consumed globally as they are either they can be either boiled or fried. Also, it's used for baking and serves as an important ingredient for confectionaries like ice cream. However, in Nigeria, the price of a crate of eggs have increased by 60% to 2,300 naira from 1,400 naira in 2022, whereas food inflation is currently at 23.75 percent. Daniela Omubo Dede, research analyst, financial derivatives company, joins me to discuss the reason behind this hike and the impact on consumption. Uh, good afternoon, Daniela. It's good to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Now, Daniela, apart from the rise in the price of inputs such as feeds from for chickens uh, that are necessary to produce the eggs, uh, what else is responsible for continued rise in the price of eggs, and is this likely to be sustained? Yes, it is true that the price of eggs have soared in the past year. In 2020, in 2022, a crate of eggs, that's 30 eggs, cost about 1,400 naira. But now that sells for about 2,300 naira, and that's a 60% price increase, whereas we have a food inflation rate of 23%. The major reason for this price hike is the rise in the price of livestock, livestock feeds. Now, aside this, we also have Incre the increased demand for eggs. The demand for eggs is higher than its supply as it is the cheapest source of protein and a very unique source of protein, as, and a very unique source of protein. Now the major, the major constitute of, poach, of the poultry industry's cost is, last, is livestock feeds. So poultry farmers have no other choice than to pass on these high prices, to, than to pass on this high cost of feeds to their consumers in the form of high prices. There's also the insecurity lack, and the lack of access to these poultry farms, lack of credits available to poultry farmers and the forex scarcity as some of the grains needed for um, producing feeds are imported. The rise in the price of eggs is likely to be sustained. We might see a situation whereby in the coming months, a crate of eggs may sell for over 2,500. Right now, a single egg costs 
100, about 100 Naira in some places, about 100 Naira in some places, this rise in price of eggs is likely to be, is likely to be sustained and it's very glaring. So now some people are even looking towards raising their own chickens themselves to lay the eggs for them, for their own consumption. So uh, I think I have to turn to uh, raising my own chickens now, um, uh, Daniela. Now, you mentioned the lack of credit facility to poultry farmers, uh, these smallholder farmers. Uh, if this continues, uh, what is stopping them from getting this credit in the first instance? And if this continues, what is the viability of egg production in Nigeria? So currently, Nigeria, has, Nigeria is the largest producer of eggs and has the second largest chicken population in Africa, but the Nigerian poultry industry is bedeviled with a lot of with a lot of challenges. Aside the um, rising costs of livestock feeds, like I said, there's also forex scarcity. A lot of money goes into um, veterinary medicine for these for these birds. For example, they have to be vaccinated. They have to buy medicines for the birds because um, diseases like bird flu spread fast among diseases like bird flu spread fast among birds. Currently, local production meets only about 30 to 40% of domestic um, needs for poultry birds and eggs. But then there is a lot of, there's, the Nigerian poultry industry has an enormous potential, has enormous potential to grow and enhance food security. But the current problem is that Majority of our poultry, our poultry production is done on a subsistence basis rather than a commercial basis. So government intervention is required maybe through um, the provision of, of grants, um, availability of loan facilities, um, flex, uh, availability of flexible credit facilities as well. All of these will go a long way in promoting the commercial production of poultry and egg to meet up with our domestic consumption. So you, you, you said something about egg being uh, one of the cheapest and a unique source of protein. Well, we say that the consumption of egg has become controversial. You know, this is because of the high cholesterol level it has. And for both the egg yolk and the whites, because they are considered to have these high cholesterol levels. So there are health concerns here, Daniela. They're real. Are they real or imagined? What do you think this poses for prospects of egg consumption in the country? So yes, it is true that eggs do contain a high level of cholesterol and fat. 60% of the calories in eggs are saturated fats. But then some studies have shown that then this, this, the cholesterol in eggs are not enough to raise our level of cholesterol. Some other studies have shown that increased consumption of eggs will increase our risk of um heart diseases, diabetes, and even some form of cancers. But then let's not forget that. Eggs are very unique. They have the demand for eggs is inelastic. Eggs don't really have any substitute. If you don't want to eat, for example, if you don't want to eat chicken, you can have turkey. If you don't want to have tea, you can have coffee. But eggs, eggs are eggs. If you don't want to eat eggs, then you have nothing. So people are still, regardless, people are still going to buy eggs. People are still going to demand for eggs. So amidst this rise in health concerns, the demand and consumption for eggs is still going to be on the rise at the end of the day too much of everything is not good thanks so much daniela omubo day day eggs are eggs as you say uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts so research analyst financial derivatives company for sharing your thoughts on the program thank you now move on to other stories where the International Monetary Fund has raised its global economic growth outlook for the first time in a year with resilient U.S. spending and China's reopening buttressing demand against risk. According to a newly released update to its World Economic Outlook report, global growth is projected to fall from an estimated 3.4% in 2022 to 2.9% in 2023, then rise to 3.1% in 2024. Global inflation is expected to fall from 8.8% in 2022 to 6.6% in 2023, and then 4.3% in 2024. Now, still above pre-pandemic levels of about 3.5%. For emerging markets and developing economies, growth is projected to rise modestly from 3.9% in 2022 to 4% in 2023, while growth for advanced economies is expected to decline sharply from 2.7% in 2022 to 1.2% in 2023.
Now, new data by advisory firm Wood Mackenzie. Woodmark has shown that 2022 was the strongest year in more than a decade for global oil and gas exploration. This was led by major discoveries in Nabib, Namibia, Brazil, and Algeria. Woodmark reports that the sector created at least $33 billion and achieved full cycle returns of 22% at Brent crude benchmark price of $60 per barrel. Now, Ghana has secured funding and technical support to improve the country's international trade infrastructure and boost business competitiveness under the African Continental Trade Free Trade Area after. Uh, the support will enable the Ministry of Trade and Industry, MOTI, to develop tra trading infrastructure across the various uh, borders in the country. MOTI has signed an agreement with Trademark Trademark Africa, a trade facilitation firm to start enhancing the performance of the Abidjan-Lagos corridor to support intra-African trade. And the signing ceremony also served as the official launch of the operations of Trademark Africa in Ghana. And that's it on Business Incorporated. Thanks for watching. I'm Willie Bong. See you tomorrow.